Remember the old riddle, what's heavier, 10 pounds of feathers or 10 pounds of lead? Here's the gym version. Where are these dumbbells heaviest? Are they heaviest here? Heaviest here? Or heaviest here? And the answer is nowhere. They're the same dumbbells. But something changed position to position to make them feel heavier, and that something was the moment arm. Now, the moment arm technically is the perpendicular distance between the line of force and the line of the axis. What does that mean? We're going to use a seesaw to demonstrate. Here's the axis. Here are the people. Let's call one Lou and one Arnold, representing the weights. And here are the moment arms. So here's the line of, line of the axis. Here's the line of force. Here's another line of force. And here is one moment arm, the perpendicular distance between the two. And here's the other moment arm. Now, assuming they weigh the same, if they're the same distance from the axis, they balance. Because the weight times the same moment arm creates an equal torque. But let's say now that Arnold moves further away from the axis. It tips, even though he still weighs the same, because now his weight acts through a bigger moment arm. Now, let's say Arnold's by himself on the seesaw, standing right over the axis, and Lou is just trying to hold down the other end with his hands. When Arnold stands over the axis, it's easy. The line of the axis and the line of his force coincide. So there's no moment arm created. But as Arnold moves progressively away from the axis, it gets harder because he's creating a greater moment arm. In the dumbbell fly, the person walking away from you on the seesaw is the dumbbell. So it's the change in the moment arm, and in turn, the change in resistance torque that makes one position feel heavier than the other. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but you do have to manage it. Ideally, by matching that maximum moment arm with the joint angle of a peak muscle torque. The dumbbell fly would seem to be an ideal choice to work the pectorals. Pectorals are the prime mover for horizontal adduction, which the fly clearly is, and the hardest mechanical part of the fly comes pretty close to matching the joint angle for peak muscle torque, which is reported at minus 30 degrees of adduction. So your upper arms are slightly behind the plane of your shoulders. But there are some issues. Okay, first, you generally start the fly at the top with the weights directly over your shoulders where there's a zero moment arm. And even though you move towards peak muscle torque, the change from zero moment arm to maximum moment arm is too drastic. And you get the timber effect, especially if it gets too heavy with the weights. What you do intuitively is you break at the elbow at the bottom. So that the maximum moment arm is slightly reduced. And what you should do voluntarily is not lock out. So you're going to keep the dumbbells away from that directly over the shoulder position, away from zero moment arm. Instead of having a sticking point and then a rest point, you're just going to feel effort. So slightly short of maximum moment arm to slightly short of zero moment arm. Now a third concern with the dumbbell fly very important from a safety standpoint is to not let the weight stretch you into the overhand position. Avoid loading horizontal abduction with external rotation. The pectoral is attached to the outside of the upper arm. So when you're here, you're beginning to stretch. But when you add external rotation, the pectorals are taut and can't help protect your shoulder. In jujitsu, this is a classic submission, no matter how strong your opponent's pectorals are. Here's an alternate version of the fly that addresses all these issues. First, 
it starts at a maximum moment arm. So if your weight is too heavy, you know right away. Uh, plus, if you lose it, you just stand up. So bend at the hips to engage the weight stack. And then you contract, but you never reach a zero moment arm. The line of force represented by the cable never actually gets over the axis at the shoulder. So the effort feels even throughout the rep. Man cleavage. So the ideal pectoral exercise would avoid zero moment arm. It would reduce the maximum moment arm by lowering to a bent elbow. And it would discourage you from externally rotating at the stretch. I've been developing a device to do just that. What? Somebody else thought of it? All right, the range of motion is deliberate. <clears throat> at the top, you want to not lock out, out your elbows, but you also don't want to hunch forward. Okay? That movement is scapular protraction. The pecs would be holding statically while the serratus would be moving the scapula. Not necessarily a bad idea, but not with a load that challenges the much bigger pectorals. At the bottom, you don't want to go too deep, say, to here, because there's no kneecap at the shoulder. The purpose of the kneecap is to keep the line of force of the quads away from the center of your, the center axis of your knee to create an internal moment arm. That doesn't exist in the shoulder, so the deeper you go, the closer the line of force from the pectorals goes to the axis. Less leverage for the pectorals, so the load that was supported by the pectorals, the deltoids, the triceps, your arm bones, is now straining the shoulder. <coughs> 